In this example, we're going to look at how we can use compatibility to determine the behavior of a reinforced concrete column under pure axial load. We'll start by choosing a strain for the column. Uh, the strain will uh, occur in both the concrete and the steel. We'll next use the stress strain curve for each material to find the corresponding stress in uh, both the concrete and the steel. Next, we'll use the respective cross-sectional areas for both the concrete and the steel to calculate the force in each material. And finally, we can add these forces together to find the total force in the column. Uh, we can repeat this procedure for different strains uh, to find a uh, strain versus load response, and we can also work uh, either way. So if we're given a force, we can work our way back to strain. Um, but in, in this example, we'll, we'll work from strain to force. Uh, the first thing we need to do for our example is determine what material curves to use. Uh, so we'll be using a um, simplified um, stress strain model for concrete uh, based on uh, work done by Todeschini in uh, 1964. And we'll be using an idealized uh, steel stress strain response where we will be uh, linear elastic and perfectly plastic. Uh, we were given a number of parameters in, in our problem description. Uh, so we were given that we have 4 KSI concrete. Uh, so with that 4, and with that 4 KSI, uh, we were um, able to find our EC of uh, 3,600 KSI. And uh, with this, we can find our epsilon naught of uh, 1.71 times 4 KSI divided by 3600 KSI to give us uh, 0 0.0019. Uh, we can use this value with our expression from Todeschini to uh, relate stress to strain uh, for our concrete. Uh, for our steel, we're using a, a, an elastic perfectly plastic model and we were given our uh, modulus of elasticity for our steel is 29,000 KSI, our yield strength is 60 KSI. Um, so then we can, uh, and that we were also given our um, yield strain of 0 0.00207. Um, so we'll use these values uh, to, or in this example problem. Now we're ready to work through the problem. Uh, so we'll start by in our, our general procedure by picking a strain for both the steel and the concrete. So these will be equal and we'll start uh, with a strain of 0 0.001 and we'll start with uh, strain and compression. Um, next we need to find our strain and our stress uh, in both the steel and the concrete. Um, so we can start with the concrete. So we'll just plug our values into our Todeschini expression. So 2 times 4 KSI times 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.0019 divided by 1 plus 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.0019 squared. Uh, so we'll get the stress in our concrete to be 3. 3 KSI. Uh, so we can do the same thing for our steel. So our steel is a little simpler. So we have um, our strain of 0 0.001 is less than yield. So we can use our modulus of elasticity for steel times the strain that we're interested in. And we'll have our stress in the steel equal to 29 KSI. We'll next need to find our forces um, in our steel and our concrete. Um, so we can start by finding our uh, concrete force. So we were given, or, um, or we could also find above, our concrete area is 138.9 square inches. And we just found our stress in our concrete, 3.3 KSI. 
So uh, our stress times our area gives us our force of 458 kips. We can do the same thing for our steel, and we'll find uh, our steel to be uh, 5.08 square inches. The area of our steel times the stress in our steel, 29 ksi, uh, will give us a force in the steel of 147.3 kips. So we can find our total force uh, just by adding these two components. So the force in our concrete plus the force in our steel gives us our total force. So this is the total force under um, an, an applied strain of 0 0.001. We can re repeat this procedure for a number of different points in compression and tension. Uh, so here I've done it for a number of points in compression. So we have the point that we just calculated uh, with the steel stress uh, force, the concrete stress, and the force. And then I have uh, several other key points that we would need if we were developing a full uh, strain versus force diagram for our column. Uh, so the first is the, um, the strain at which our concrete uh, reaches its um, maximum stress. So at uh, 0 0.0019 or 0 0.002, uh, we'll have 4 KSI in our concrete. Um, so we have our maximum concrete stress, maximum concrete force. Uh, the next point is the point at which our steel yields. Um, so there we, we start in our uh, yield plateau or our perfectly uh, plastic uh, behavior in, in the uh, stress strain diagram for steel. Um, and it just so happens that at this point, using the, the expression that we're using, we also have four KSI concrete. Um, so next we have before and after our concrete crushes. So we're assuming that our concrete crushes at 0 0.003 strain. So at this point, um, before it crushes, we'll have a um, stress in the concrete and a force in the concrete. After it crushes, we assume that our concrete just drops off completely. Um, so we'll see this when we look at the diagram, but you can see how we handle it in the table here. Um, and then finally, we can find a strain at the end of our um, strain hardening region. Uh, so our strain hardening region ends at about 0 0.01 strain. So that would be the last point where uh, we could assume uh, that 60 KSI in our steel is valid. So these are the, the significant points in compression. We can next look at uh, the behavior of the column in tension. Uh, so because concrete is, it doesn't behave well in, in tension, we need to um, handle things a little differently on this side of, uh, of the curve. Um, so we need a couple other points. The first is the tensile strength. Um, so for this problem, we're going to use uh, the expression 7.5 square roots uh, F prime C to find the tensile strength. So uh, plugging in 7.5 times the square root of 4,000 PSI will give us a value of, um, I guess, and if we divide by 1,000 pounds per kip, we'll get uh, 0.474 KSI. Uh, we can then find our strain um, at, at the tensile, tensile strength of the concrete, um, assuming linear behavior. So I have just our tensile strength divided by our modulus. So for us, 0.474 KSI divided by our modulus, 3600 KSI, making sure that our units are consistent. So we'll find the strain then to be 1.32 times 10 to the negative fourth. Uh, so you can see that this point is the first point on our table. So this is the um, the strain at which our, our concrete fails in tension. So we can uh, use the same relationships we did above to find the stress in the steel um, and the stress in the concrete uh, at this point, and then use uh, our areas to find our force in the steel and force in the concrete, and then combine them to find our, our total force in the column. Um, so at this point, the 
concrete will crack and it won't contribute anymore to the strength. So what happens is uh, we'll have some plastic deformation uh, as we go, um, or as the load transfers from the concrete and steel to the steel itself. So what we can do is we can find the um, strain in the steel uh, after cracking by taking the load that we have at cracking and dividing by the area of the steel and dividing by the uh, modulus of elasticity of the steel. So for us, we have the load at cracking is 85.4 kips and we're dividing by the area in our steel, 5.08 inches squared times our modulus of elasticity in the steel, 29,000 KSI, which will give us a strain of uh, 5.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Uh, so you can see that um, we won't pick up any more load as we're moving from um, our strain of um, 1.32 times 10 to the negative fourth to 5.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. But you can see that the force is transferring um, from the steel and the concrete to um, just the steel itself. The other significant points in tension are the yield point in tension, which is the same as uh, the yield point in compression and then the end of our strain hardening region. Um, so after we have these um, points, we have uh, the complete curve for our tension side. So this is what our complete curve looks like for our column, uh, strain versus load. Um, so you can see that in compression, uh, we have our um, curve as we're gaining strength in our concrete and steel. Um, we have our, our point when our uh, concrete reaches its uh, maximum strength and when our steel reaches yield, um, then our concrete fails. So this is right before crushing, right after crushing, you can see the strength just drops straight off. And then we have um, our yield plateau with our steel. On the tension side, we can see that we're linear up until the point of cracking. Uh, then we move, um, we have this inelastic or uh, this plastic um, uh, kinetic ro uh, d deflection as the steel um, picks up the force from the concrete. Then we're linear elastic as uh, the steel goes up to yield. And then we're uh, plastic um, as our uh, steel is on the yield plateau. Um, so this is the, uh, the, the complete curve using uh, the material curves um, for our column.